For nearly four decades, the General Dynamics F111 Aardvark, known affectionately as the Pig, was the backbone of Australia's long-range strike capability. Operated by the Royal Australian Air Force from 1973 to 2010, this swing-wing behemoth was unmatched in its ability to deliver heavy payloads over vast distances, striking deep into potential adversaries' territory with precision and stealth-like low-level penetration. Its retirement in 2010 left a void in Australia's air combat arsenal, one that no single aircraft has fully filled. Instead, the Royal Australian Air Force has adopted a diverse fleet of modern platforms, FA-18F Super Hornets, F-35A Lightning IIs, EA-18G Growlers, and P-8A Poseidons, supported by force multipliers like KC-30A tankers. The F-111 was a unique beast, tailored for Australia's strategic needs. Entering service with the Royal Australian Air Force in 1973, the F-111C variant featured longer wings and reinforced landing gear to handle the country's expansive geography, enabling unrefueled strikes across the Indo-Pacific. With a combat radius exceeding 1,500 nautical miles and a payload capacity of 31,500 pounds, it could carry an arsenal of bombs, missiles, and later precision-guided munitions like the AGM-142 Popeye. The aircraft's terrain-following radar allowed it to hug the ground at low altitudes, evading radar in all weather conditions, a capability that made it a formidable deterrent during the Cold War and beyond. The Royal Australian Air Force operated 24 F-111Cs, four RF-111C reconnaissance variants, and 15 F-111Gs acquired from the U.S. for spares, all based at Royal Australian Air Force Base Amberley in Queensland. By the 2000s, however, the F-111 faced obsolescence, rising maintenance costs, aging airframes, and the absence of stealth technology rendered it vulnerable to modern air defenses. Its retirement was hastened by delays in the Lockheed Martin F-35 program, prompting Australia to acquire 24 F-A-18F Super Hornets in 2007 as an interim measure. When the F-111 flew its final sortie in December 2010, it marked the end of an era, leaving the Royal Australian Air Force to redefine its strike capabilities through a networked, multi-role approach. The historical context of the F-111 service illuminates why replacing it was so complex. Selected in 1963 to succeed the Royal Australian Air Force's Canberra bombers, the F-111 was chosen for its ability to project power across Southeast Asia and the Pacific, aligning with Australia's forward defense posture during the Cold War. Despite early challenges, delivery delays until 1973, and technical issues like wing fatigue, the aircraft became a symbol of Australian air power, capable of striking naval fleets, airfields, or infrastructure far from home. Upgrades in the 1990s, including digital avionics and precision weapons, extended its relevance, but by the 2000s, the strategic landscape had shifted. The rise of sophisticated anti-access area denial systems particularly in China's arsenal, demanded stealth and survivability over brute force. The F-35, intended to replace both the F-111 and the Royal Australian Air Force's F-A-18AB Hornets, promised advanced sensors and low observability, but couldn't match the F-111's range or payload. The interim Super Hornets, while versatile, also fell short in these areas. The absence of a direct replacement reflects a deliberate choice. Australia's defense planners prioritized flexibility and integration over a specialized platform, recognizing that no single aircraft could replicate the F-111's niche without compromising modern requirements. Deployment patterns underscore how the Royal Australian Air Force has redistributed the F-111's roles across its current fleet. The F-111 itself never saw combat, but its presence was felt in regional exercises like Pitch Black and Red Flag, where it demonstrated its ability to simulate long-range strikes from Australian bases to distant targets. Its RF-111C variants proved their worth in reconnaissance, notably during the 1999 East Timor crisis, 
providing critical imagery for peacekeeping operations. Since 2010, the Royal Australian Air Force's successors have taken on these tasks with mixed results. The FA-18F Super Hornets deployed to the Middle East for Operation Okra 2014-2017, striking ISIS targets with precision-guided munitions, proving their multi-role prowess. The F-35A, fully delivered by December 2024, has integrated into exercises like Pitch Black 2024, leveraging stealth and sensor fusion for air superiority and targeted strikes. The EA-18G Growler, operational since 2017, excels in electronic warfare, jamming enemy radars to enable strikes, a role that complements but doesn't replicate the F-111's direct attack capability. Meanwhile, the P-8A Poseidon conducts maritime surveillance and anti-ship strikes, notably under Operation Argos to enforce North Korean sanctions. These deployments highlight a shift from the F-111's standalone power to a collaborative model, where multiple platforms share responsibilities, supported by tankers and command and control assets like the E-7A Wedgetail. The roles and purposes of the F-111 were distinct, making a like-for-like -like successor elusive. Its primary mission was long-range strike, delivering devastating payloads to strategic targets, airfields, ports, or fleets with minimal support. Its reconnaissance variants gathered intelligence, while its mere existence deterred aggression by signaling Australia's reach. The low-level penetration capability, enabled by terrain-following radar, allowed nighttime and all-weather operations, a rarity for its era. Today's Royal Australian Air Force fleet spreads these tasks across platforms with trade-offs. The FA-18F Super Hornet, with a combat radius of about 700 nautical miles and a payload of 17,750 pounds, handles air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missions, carrying standoff weapons like the AGM-158 JASM ER. Yet, it lacks the F-111's endurance and bomb truck capacity. The F-35A, with a range of what 1,200 nautical miles and a maximum payload of 18,000 pounds, 5,700 internally for stealth, prioritizes precision and survivability in contested environments, but relies on tankers for deep strikes. The EA-18G Growler disrupts defenses, enabling other aircraft to strike, while the P-8A Poseidon focuses on maritime targets with harpoon missiles. The KC-30A tanker extends operational reach, partially offsetting shorter ranges, but the F-111's ability to fly unrefueled to distant targets remains unmatched. This fragmentation reflects a broader trend. Modern air forces favor versatility and networked effects over specialized, heavy platforms. Australia's defense strategy, as articulated in the 2024 National Defense Strategy and 2020 Defense Strategic Update, explains why no F-111 equivalent has emerged. The strategy centers on the Indo-Pacific, countering China's military expansion and A-280 capabilities while strengthening alliances like AUKUS and the Quad. Networked warfare, integrating air, sea, land, cyber, and space domains is paramount, with an emphasis on interoperability with the US, Japan, and others. The F-111 suited an era when Australia needed a sovereign, long-range deterrent to compensate for geographic isolation. Today, Threats like hypersonic weapons, cyber attacks, and advanced radar systems demand stealth, agility, and data fusion, qualities the F-35A and Growler provide. Multi-role platforms allow the Royal Australian Air Force to pivot between air superiority, strike, and electronic warfare, unlike the F-111's narrower focus. Force multipliers, such as tankers and unmanned systems, extend reach, while allied assets, US B-52s, F-22s, or Japanese F-35s bolster deterrence in coalition operations. This approach reduces the need for a dedicated heavy striker, as networked forces can achieve similar strategic effects with greater flexibility. The strategy also emphasizes sovereign capability, with programs like the MQ-28A Ghostbat Unmanned Aerial Vehicle signaling a shift toward scalable, cost-effective solutions.